this one's gonna be about. What we've learned watching all these movies is, the more of them I make, the more you want to know. And what you want to know is everything. How do you make force fields? Light speed. And flying spaceships. Well, I tell you, but there's one problem. We don't know how. If we knew how to invent all this stuff, we would have invented it. I would have invented it, and I'd be a multi-trillionaire. But we can't. We can't do super weapons, we can't do force fields, we can't even do a simple lightsaber. Pity. Regardless, whenever this stuff is invented, there's certain laws of physics it's all going to have to obey, certain problems it's all going to have to solve, especially the cloaking device. But that's why we're here. It's one thing we've learned after all this time is that pointing out all the problems is half the fun. I'm not done with him yet. Interesting. I can't wait to try that one. If we're going to talk about cloaks and invisibility, we need to decide what kind we're going to talk about. The stealth technology that we already have already works against simple radar. Radar is an acronym. Radio detecting and ranging. Radar stations send out blasts of light, radio waves. If there's something there, the light hits it, bounces back, and it's detected. Stealth solves this problem by not bouncing the light back, but bending it around, making it, as far as radar is concerned, invisible. But we want total invisibility. Can't see you at all. And there's a couple of ways to do that. One is to be simply transparent. Light goes right through you without touching anything. This describes the typical invisible man. The disadvantage is, even though you're transparent, nothing you hold, touch, or even breathe is. So you can be caught if someone's just a little bit clever. The other way is to bend light. Light is bent around you, so it never goes through you or even hits you at all. This is what we've been waiting for. Bending light is the holy grail of the cloaking device. It's something we've imagined and dreamed about for decades. Visibility is theoretically possible, Captain. Selective bending of light, but the power cost is enormous. Defensive adaptations are astounding. It's somehow able to bend light. It's the perfect camouflage. We want the cloaking device so bad, we give it to everybody. Both our heroes and our villains. All this is very exciting, but it avoids the most obvious question. Can light be bent? And the answer is simple, yes, it can. All you need to see that is a telescope. Space is big, really big. And when astronomers first pointed their telescopes at it, they saw things which were at first so strange they could not be explained. Stuff like mirror twin images of the same star back to back triple and even quadruple images of a single star, and entire galaxies duplicated, warped around a central point. We can imagine it like this. Suppose we're looking out into space and we see something big, pulsar, quasar, nebula, whatever. We see it because it's shooting off light in all directions. But suppose there's something in our way, like a humongous galaxy. Galaxies hold everything together with huge amounts of heavy gravity. So when the pulsar quasar tries to shoot off its light, the heavy gravity catches it and bends it. Creating what looks like, from our point of view, two duplicate images. This whole process is called a gravitational lens, the natural bending of light. So if you want to be invisible, just take a gravitational field, fine-tune it, and... 
But can we do it? Not yet. As we said, if we knew how to do this, we would have done it. And we could be invisible right now. But knowing that it can be done is the first step if you want it bad enough. What we do know is that when we do have the clerk, there are a number of serious problems it's going to have to solve, and those we can predict and start working on right now. How serious are these problems? Well, you tell me. There's three of them. If you've invented a cloaking field that bends away all outside light, congratulations. But what about all the light that's coming from the inside? The human body exists at a temperature of nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This expresses itself as heat and light. Infrared light. And it's not just people, it's everything. Every atom above the absolutely frozen temperature of absolute zero emits some form of infrared radiation, no matter how minuscule. And unless you do something to stop it, it will be detected, especially in black space. Thermal temperature is negligible, 0.015 microns. That is primarily what keeps the enemy invisible to our infrared sensors. And heat's just for starters. Those emissions of electrical fields, miscellaneous power. All of which can turn your starship into one big fat target. Commander, the Defiance power signature is unusually high for a ship this size. The cloaking device may not be masking everything. And even that's assuming infrared light is the only way to see you. In our mad dash to get a working cloak, we forget that bending light causes a problem of its own. There. That distortion, see it? Remember the gravitational lens? Bending light can cause duplicate phantom images. So yes, you can bend the light, but no one ever said you could bend it where you wanted it to go. A cloaking device of some sort? A cloaking device operating on the surface would be given away by visible distortion effects. These first two problems, while serious, are not necessarily fatal. With a little bit of jiggering, you could probably work your way around them. But I did say that there were three problems, and the third one most definitely is fatal. You want to block off all light? Well, you're going to get exactly what you want. With a problem so obvious it has to be seen, to be believed. Sight. Cloaking fields are all about sight. You can see someone because light reflects off of them and into your eyes. They see you because light reflects into their eyes. So if you want to stop all this, put up a cloaking field to bend the light around and they'll never see a thing. Of course, the field is going to do the exact same thing to the light coming from them. Then you're in your starship, sailing across the galaxy. A galaxy full of rainbows of color, fantastic objects in all direction. But if your cloak is up, all that wondrous color is bent away, and all you see is black. Sight needs light. For the human eye to work, light enters the iris, impacts the retina, which sends the signal back to the brain via the optic nerve. If your eye is blocked behind a cloak, light never reaches the retina and you never see a thing. If you block off all light from reaching you, you are blind. Don't tell me no one's ever thought of that before. What did you think was going to happen? If you make up the rules as you go, there's always a negative consequence. That's physics. But no matter. Until they invent the cloaking device, we have something to tide us over. There's one more way to become invisible that we haven't talked about yet, and it doesn't involve bending light or making you go blind. We'll need to invent something before this way will work too, but I can't wait. This way is going to be so much fun. Let's just slow down. While we're fooling around with bending light, shooting light, and going faster than light, let's just take a moment to figure out how this light thing really works. 
Light comes in units called photons, and photons are the fastest thing in our universe, going up to 300 million meters every second. But as fast as they are, the problem is space is just too gosh darn big. It's so big that even photons take eight minutes just to get from the sun to the earth. The sun could even go black this instant and we wouldn't know a thing for 480 seconds. But that speed is Mother Nature's speed limit, not ours. We get to invent stuff and sooner or later we are going to invent faster than light. Four hundred and eighty seconds is entirely too far. What about a mere ten seconds? Warp jump in your spaceship out of nowhere, ten seconds away from a planet, and it's going to take your light ten seconds to get there. For those ten seconds, you are totally and completely invisible. The planet can't see you. They have no idea you're there, for there's no light for them to see. But you can see them. And they wouldn't know that anything had happened until it was all over. And that's just the first trick. Suppose now you're on your starship on patrol when you're on the far side of a huge planet you see your enemy. This time let's say you're about five light seconds apart. You both see each other at exactly the same time, so you're in something of a Mexican standoff. How do you shoot him without being shot back? Jump! You performed what Starfleet textbooks now refer to as the Picard Maneuver. And blowing into maximum warp speed, you appeared for an instant to be in two places at once. When you jump, there's still five seconds of your light left behind. For those five seconds, your opponent still sees your ship right where it was. And that's where he's going to shoot. And miss. You won't. So, wouldn't it be great if we could actually invent any of this stuff? Television makes it all look so easy. Super weapons, super tech, and the cloak are all stuffed into every TV show they can find an excuse for. So even after all of our real achievement and centuries of real progress in what we can do, the TV is still there, that daily continuous reminder laughing at us about what we can't. <laughs> well, what do we have? This. We don't know how to bend light, but Mother Nature does. It can be done. One little spark of inspiration and we'll figure out how to do it too. All we need is one inspired person. And who might that be? Well, why not you? You're smart, you're curious, and you ask all the right questions. You have every bit the shot that anyone else does. So what do you want? Out of all the super inventions you've ever asked me about, what do you want the most? They're all up for grabs. Whoever invents them first wins. It can be you. All you need to start is one goal. So what do you want? Well, you know what I want. Sooner or later, one of you is going to invent this for me because you want it every bit as badly as I do. Well, you teach me how to do it. Your turn.